Well, welcome. It's good to welcome the Hembrys, who are our new CMS mission partners. I had the fortune when I worked uh, for CMS to spend a few days up in Hull uh, with Chris and Anna. So, guys, it's it's amazing to welcome you as our new mission partners to Stretton Parish. Thank you. Thank you. It's nice to see you all. Yeah, looking much younger than we were all those years ago, of course. <laughs> Of course. You are. <laughs> yeah. It's just covered well. Okay, <laughs> Romain, I think you've got some questions. Oh, uh, yeah. It, um, it, it'd be great, I think, just to, to set off with a, a bit of a picture of where you live, um, what, it, what it looks like, what it feels like, and, and maybe you could tell us a little bit about the work you do at the same time. Yeah, it, it looks like the old fishing industry sort of community um so it's you know that's that's where it kind of got its prosperity from over a number of decades um and then of course there was the decline in the fishing industry that everyone will kind of know about and so with that decline comes unemployment and all the other sort of um issues that you get with that you know and then you know people you know then generation after generation, people have, I think, maybe lost a bit of hope and confidence. And um, I think we're still trying to find our way out of that. Although it does feel like we are starting to, you know, we've had some like positive things happening with uh, Siemens um, Wind Farm and stuff like that. Built a big factory here. And uh, so, uh, you know, more, more employment coming to the city. Uh, we were city of culture um, a few years back so that is definitely it feels like we're on the up um, but it doesn't always feel like those up bits have ended up here <laughs> in this little bit of the city um, so, so we're yeah. talking Hull yeah <laughs> yeah and we're talking what where where are we talking in in Hull we're talking dock side dock docks Area is yeah. that where we're at? Yeah. Yeah, it's just west of the city centre. Um and the docks, most of the docks are gone, obviously, but um Hull sits on the Humber, so there's no south. Yeah. So it's just sort of yeah, yeah. So, so we're, we're just west of the we're city. We're close center. to the Humber, aren't we, really? We're only 20 minutes walk from town. Okay. So it's not a it's not a massive city, really. It's quite a it's quite a small city, geo geo graphically <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah yeah how long have you been there we've been here 25 years this year wow yeah come, come september october time yeah be 25 years yeah. so you've seen some change yeah <laughs> for yeah. the better or for the worse what? sorry but the uh, better, better or for worse what's the main changes i uh, think I think I think there's been a, a a lot of change for the better in in one sense. It felt very crazy in the early mm. days. There was a lot less on offer generally, you know. Mm. Um, and um, yeah, there were just young people wandering around. Every day looked like a school holiday because there were young. Chaotic, there were, yeah, there were yeah. young people wandering around. Ferally. there were dogs wandering around fairly <laughs> and there was yeah. every day there were burnt out cars and burnt out mopeds it was it was this bit had a very bad reputation um i think people just felt very un unwanted unseen yeah. you know written off <laughs> um yeah so i think it was and there, there, there were lots of things that just seemed less of now that now there are pla other places for young people to go before there was our youth club but there wasn't really anything else whereas there are other clubs the schools have got after school things going on yeah. um we yeah. used to yeah the, i mean the kids club that actually started prior to us um when i when we, when we first turned up the and we started to help with that club um we were getting 60 70 children a week um 
and now although it's not run for a while but the the um you know it kind of went down to sort of 15 20 on a good day but that's because of like Anna was saying the school had a lot more provision and you know there's a lot of other things out there now for children and young people that, that back then there just wasn't it, it yeah there was nothing really it is still an area of huge disadvantage mm -hmm. and you know all the stats uh, compared to national averages are yeah. kind of off the scales in the top three percent of you know the worst of everything <laughs> child poverty and all the rest of it um so it's not that there aren't any needs anymore but actually and actually in a way some things are very much some kind of poverty is very much the same um aside from the financial poverty um which is more to do with isolation and disconnect yeah. from themselves from each other yeah. from god yeah yeah. Uh, yeah 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 because the churches are yeah i think I don't know if it's like this in every city, but the, it's certainly the deprived parts of Hull have very deprived churches. And I think we've seen over the years that we've been here, churches that were, a couple of them maybe had 50-ish 50, 50 people in, right. may now have 12, 13, 14, 15 people, you know, and they're all, you know, it kind of fluctuates, but generally that's, um that's where it's at and it, you know you know over the years we've just seen basically people moving out uh and you know the, the, any any of the sort of uh, christians that could move out would started to move out um some are obviously elderly and, and passed on um and no one's moved back in yeah. so the, it's it's some of the churches just get keep shrinking in these bits and and they're not growing you know and and I guess even some of the young people that we've worked with that have come to faith have gone to church outside of the area as well and are parts of uh, a part of other churches that are you know you sort of more sort of have other young people in there. have other young people yeah and it's slightly bigger and a bit more yeah like a bit livelier yeah. um so in, anyone that's come to faith here has kind of moved on to other churches so he, <laughs> our sort of the vision really was to sort of grow an indigenous church, but it, it's a dispersed indigenous church <laughs> for us, you know. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Is there a story you can tell us that that says something about why this place matters to you? That you know, some of the folks you've touched, the lives you've touched, um, or God has touched through you. Um, is there is there something you can tell us that helps us to see that? <laughs> um, I think I was chatting to one of the lads at work today actually because I do some driving for Builder as well and um, I was just kind of telling some of the stories of the conversations that we both had both had with people and um, and this is this is these are regular conversations fairly regular you know and uh, I remember we lived on another street when we first came here and a uh a girl moved in next door with her little girl uh and i, I was out the front was chatting to her it's, her name was mandy and uh the first her first words were uh yeah i was a heroin addict but i'm just on methadone now and that was our that was our initial conversation and there was something really oh, just freeing in that you know having been that honest with each other because then yeah in a sense you have that confidence to talk about your faith freely as well because it's so open um just and on and honest you know so i think they then expect you to be honest as well so you can talk about god and jesus in with no it's not a problem <laughs> you know um and then anna was having a conversation the other day with the guy down our street <laughs> and um he lives at the house at the bottom you, you tell it because you had the you talked to him, didn't you but yeah i was just uh, we've got a new puppy so he was <laughs> talking about the puppy and then i said oh uh, do, do you live down one of the houses down our street because i'd seen him but i hadn't you know i felt he was sort of fairly new to the street 
and and he said oh yeah I've moved in I live in the you know one down the end blah blah uh, student house uh, but there's only me in it at the minute and uh, I said I said all oh, right are you on the course and, and he's like nah I was, I was drug dealing and firearms <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's not that because he's, he's got, got, because he's got, got a baby now. So a, a baby, and he wants to try and get custody of the baby, yeah. and so he's trying to sort his life out. But yeah. uh, it's just. <laughs> but that is one of the beautiful things about this. Well, it's definitely this area is that you can have those conversations, and people don't hold back, basically. So. Um, that enables you to be as open and honest with them you know about faith and anything else really so well it, ena it enables us but it also te taught us i think <laughs> you yeah. know yeah but, yeah but, but, it, there's no such thing as masks are there in those in in, in no. that type no. of that, yeah. 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 so connections in some ways are easy yeah. though though in a way but they they they're more real, aren't they? You know, they're raw, but yeah, we're... they're quite raw. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And there's a vulnerability with each other when you do community together, isn't there? And you do life, <laughs> you know. And if you yeah, can't, definitely, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I don't know for Anna, but I think one of my sort of happiest kind of out of all my memories and things of that we we've, we've done or been a part of or what God has done through us uh, is, is the breakfast club really that we we started in 1999 and it, that's still running but it's run by someone else now but it's still uh, um, we still volunteer <laughs> we go and volunteer there now but uh, yeah it was just that came out of the children's club because we wanted to see the kids every day um, and and kind of in a sense prove that God was alive every day and not just on a Sunday you know so the it was yeah it was really important for us to find other ways of sort of re engaging with the young people so we we started the breakfast club with a bunch of volunteers uh, and that the first morning we had eight kids and and uh over the years it, it grew and and you know some days you, again you had 60 kids there and all their parents as well and it was you know um and so it and out of that club and the after school club but out of breakfast club really the relationships with the parents that have made a massive difference and and a lot of the young people as well that have and that have come to faith that will come on the summer camps they've all come through breakfast club um and those relationships that's where it's kind of started really you know so and that's still ongoing um so that and it feels like it's made a massive difference to this, to a lot of people in this community, um, because it's a place where they've come to meet other families now as well and, and done stuff together and lots of things. You know, we did some mums nights, didn't we, where we invited all the mums and all the guys, the, the dads and the team, they did, we had our sort of sticky bows on and we did all the serving and the cooking and everything. And, and we had these big banquet tables and we, it was in the, where we do breakfast club um and we just i mean even one of the mums was it couldn't believe we we just served slur basically mm. and she had it's this this particular uh was she a grandmother but um it's alcoholic but um she was convinced that she would we'd been serving her wine that she was having such an amazing time just laughing and falling around and just just having a, it was just a really great night, you know. Um, and she couldn't believe that it was schlur and wasn't wasn't real, wasn't proper wine. So um, um, I think it was so special for, you know, they just haven't been out anywhere, yeah. you know, for years. Some some of these mums and not, it's, yeah, just to be able to do those kinds of things for them. And we'd have someone do come and do a, basically have a. Uh, uh, where we had Lady Vicar, we had some other friends that come they would do a talk on each on each mum's night, you know, uh, about being a mum basically. Um, and it, it, yeah, it was, uh, there was just, yeah, it was amazing, yeah, really powerful. The power of paying attention. Yeah, so there's some of my favourite things. <laughs> Steve, do you want to 
Yeah, so I was wondering kind of in, in all those 25 years of ministry thus far, um, and then as you move forward, how do you listen to the community and, and hear what's going on? Um, it's yours. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a man. I don't. I'm not a very good listener. <laughs> I didn't say anything. <laughs> um, I think um, by giving time to to just hanging out. And then um, I think we try and create spaces where where people, you know, there's, there's a, a feminist theologian who, who had a phrase hearing into speech. And um, that's kind of about being holding space in a way that that people find the words and start to talk. Um, so it's not just listening when someone speaks, but allowing, you know, creating those spaces where people can find their voice and start to talk and, and, and then be able to be heard to the end of their story rather than, you know, mm. cut in and interpret. But I think there's, list, there's also listening to what's not being said and listening to, um, I don't know, the energy in, in a relationship or in a person or in, in the room. So, I, th I think just paying attention to the subtle stuff mm. and the little things is the little things are always the big things um, mm. and the kind of plot and facts and general arc of a story is kind of <laughs> not so not so key somehow. Um, we try and walk around a lot don't we and just sort yeah. of try and always trying to keep in touch with the community you know with people and um we'll just yeah. walk around the neighborhood and yeah feel it rather than just yeah you know be in our house or go to events it just try and make time to yeah. see who we might bump into and even when you don't bump into someone you kind of you feel the neighborhood better on your feet it than in a car or yeah. you know yeah going to rushing to one thing or another so yeah, try and walk as much as we can. Okay. Mm. And, and it, kind of thinking in the here and now and kind of, you know, we've, we've heard some of the stories of what God's done, you know, what about, what are you grateful to God for at the moment in your, in your mission work, if we want to use that phrase? Um, <laughs> I think... Um, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the relationships, and I'm grateful that I've learned along the way. So um, I think the way in which we do anything is less uh, for people and more. We're all in it together, <laughs> you know, more yeah. with people. Um, so it's it's less patronizing or um taking you know it doesn't take agency away from anyone else and i, I think I, I just feel grateful that it, it you know people are hard pressed and times are really tough it's not to take away from any of that but there's a there's a way in which we can be with each other that um that means we can share our sorrows together but we can also celebrate and i think a lot of when our, our motivation when we first came was um, kind of high on the compassion end of things, I think. But compassion can easily be kind of either patronizing or, or create certain power uh, yeah. kind of dynamics where you know you're the provider and they're the receiver, and um, you're the kind of sorted one and they're the one who needs fixing that sort of thing. Yeah. And we, yeah, it, we we kind of could see. The more we could see that in ourselves, the more we wanted to change it. And I, I think not that we don't do compassion, but I think there's something about um, celebration, you know, celebrating each other um, that doesn't dis discount sorrow and hardship and pain, um, but that we travel it together um, and we can bring that kind of weird joy that you can only get with God even when times are hard. Mm. 
Um, so yeah, I think I'm enjoying. I'm grateful for that. I, I, yeah, for me, I think there's so many things really, but I I think Fridays for me we go and we um, volunteer at Breakfast Club in the morning, and then we go and do um, church at the little Methodist church around the corner um, with a, a handful of people, and it I don't know, just I don't know, we just love it, don't we? It, it it's it's a real mixture. <laughs> of uh characters that come along um there's a lot of mental health stuff going on which includes all of us <laughs> but um yeah we've just been going through this book like since we got back from sort of lockdown thing we've been going through this book each week and it, it it's been great because people have really opened up and it yeah just uh, and sharing everybody sharing where they're at and how they're doing and uh, uh just looking at some of the parables um, and stuff from the New Testament and trying to relate those stories to our context here. Mm -hmm. And then just whoever comes through the door really is comes and adds to that. And, and often it, it, yeah, it can be a little bit off the wall and take you at a tangent. And, but we've all, I mean, the book is called being interrupted. So, it's when someone comes in and interrupts it you're like yeah this is what it's all about <laughs> and uh they bring their whatever they've got going on in their day they bring it you know and um and we go with it and 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 again try and encourage them to be a part of this whatever we've been reading and try it. and it, yeah it's been fantastic i've just really grown from that i think um and and i think as a as a church, um, we've we've grown a lot. I think just from sort of that honesty, you know. Um, so yeah, that's I'm really grateful for that. Right. So, and if that's grateful for, what what's the, what would you say? I mean, you were saying you know you you're, you can't switch off at night or whatever it is. Um, yeah. What's the thing that wakes you up that bothers you about you know where you are, what you're doing? What's the thing that weighs heavily at the moment? Um, in in the circumstances you are, I, I think the thing. I mean, I think there's plenty of stuff around social injustices that are very obvious where we are now. But I think the thing that uh, probably bothers me most is is that I know this isn't the end of someone's story this isn't all there is to it and so many people feel their story is a particular thing and it's set and they define themselves a certain way yeah. and I feel defiant about that <laughs> so yeah it bothers me enough to get me out of bed yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think no you know your, your story um with God you get to rewrite your story um your story will it's, you don't rewrite your past but you you know you you you, you can write what happens next and mm -hmm. yeah yeah i want us to write it together mm -hmm. fantastic yeah. chris oh, i don't know i'm not sure i'm bothered about anything to be honest <laughs> um you know true story <laughs> <laughs> i don't feel yeah, I don't know. I just I feel fairly hopeful about all the things. I think I think when you've been somewhere a long time, you see the you know things coming and going, and um, you know, uh, like for instance, youth club. It go number. You know, we've had 30, 40 kids and a waiting list, and now we've got. 10 kids you know and uh, it doesn't bother me I really like actually that we've only got this handful that we can really spend a lot of time with when with 40 uh, young people you just can't you're just policing it you know so um I think that, yeah I've seen people coming and going that kind of will go oh there's only you know 
this is not happening or that's not happening or that. But he's just, I'm like, uh, yes, yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> it'll it'll come back. Don't worry, God will do his thing. You know, the, the fact that we've got this small group of young people, are just, you know, we completely believe that God has brought those, that bunch of young people for this time for them, you know. Um, and they, yeah, they're young people that used to come to Breakfast Club. They're 16, 17, 18 now. So we've been, you know, we've been with them for a long time, but they they need a lot of support. <laughs> um, and it feels like this is their their time to get that support, you know. Uh, and 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 God has kind of ordained that for them right now. So um, lots of things I think that I could be bothered about. Actually, that I don't need to be. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so when uh, uh, we've been uh, dwelling and, and living in kind of Ephesians three this beginning of this year, and um, this weekend we're thinking particularly a little bit about verse twenty, which talks about now to him who is able to do immeasurably more then all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. So what, what is it that you would want to ask for or imagine for Hull, for where you are, for your context and the people that you are working and walking alongside? That's a big question. Yeah. <laughs> I think I imagine uh, more connectedness mm -hmm. um, with each other in relationships in our community and um, out of that connectedness, um, more kind of finding strength and, mm -hmm. and cre creating, you know, creating play, creating opportunities, creating whatever uh, together. Um, I, I feel I feel it's all entirely possible and I also feel like it needs the spirit of God to, <laughs> yeah, bring that. Yeah, I think similar for me, but I, I, I like, like I mentioned the Fridays at, um, at the little mission church, I, I, for me, I feel like that's, it's just the beginning. It feels like it's just starting, really. But I see it like when we go on, we go to this camp in the summer where we take young people and some of them are campers, some of them come as crew and help, and some have in recent years become uh, tent leaders and or tent partners, and some of them have ended up doing talks and things. So you can see the progression of the, yeah. the young people. You know, they're really grown, you know. Um, but as a community, that can is about, um, I think, 70 or 80 sort of staff people, you know, that are sort of running this whole site. Sort of thing. But it's such a, I don't know, always, well, we always think of it as it's like a picture of the kingdom of God, all these different people coming together and for these sort of seven or eight days, just living together, praying together, just and it just feels like one big family and i yeah i'd love to see that here in some some way which is similar to what anna said somehow to to bring that all together all these individuals and and just give them a glimpse of the kingdom really mm -hmm. um as they build relationships with other people and things but so we see it in small pockets don't we but just want to see more of that really you know yeah yeah. Great. Well, as, as we kind of begin this partnership um, over these coming years and wherever God takes us, uh, we look forward to doing life with you guys um, and learning from you. And um, just a reminder that there is life beyond the hills uh, here in the Strettons. Um, so thank you for joining us. And um, yeah, we look forward to catching up in person um, at some point as we uh, yeah grow together. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. <laughs>
So, hi, um, we've now got with us, um, by the um, wonders of modern technology, we have Lee and Petra Williams with us. Um, welcome to our parish weekend, Lee and Petra. No, oh, th um, thank you for having us. Lee and Petra are in the Czech Republic. Um, they've been there a short while um, and they are uh, one of our two new mission partners. So this is really exciting. The beginning of a journey, the beginning of a relationship, which we hope is going to take us into all sorts of amazing places um, together. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if you could paint us a bit of a picture uh, about where it is that you live at the moment. <clears throat> yeah. So we uh, live in Brno, which is uh, to the east of the Czech Republic, about two and a half hours away from Prague. Um, Brno is the second largest city in the Czech Republic, um, around 400,000 um, inhabitants. It's a formal industrial city that stagnated under the communist regime, but recently started reinventing itself as a center of um, engineering and development. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's often referred to as the Moravian Manchester. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that gives you a little bit of a kind of yeah. idea of, of, of you know, uh, where its past um, has been, but also as it's trying to kind of reinvent itself and, and looking uh, to the future too. Um, I should say as well that um, there's a little bit of a rivalry between kind of Prague and Brno. Um, Brno being the kind of, smaller city, um, the second city, um, it's often kind of looked down upon a little bit as, uh, well, the smaller relation. Um, they often say it's, it's, it's the biggest uh, village in the country, but uh, <laughs> it, it, it's one that we love. And you're going to have to pause a minute and help us pronounce this place that you live in. So we, we want to get it right. So <laughs> why don't we practice that? <clears throat> well, I've over to you, Patricia. <laughs> it's um, Brno. And that's spelt B-R-N-O. Brno. Yeah. I'm not going to dare to, to uh, respond. Vowels, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, go on, Romain, what was it? Yeah. <laughs> Brno. 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 Yeah. yeah. You're better at it, Steve, than me. <laughs> oh, I, I can tell you, we, we've heard many pronunciation of it over the, the, the last months and years. And uh, no, I, I think that was, that they, they, they were two of the better ones. <laughs> <laughs> but tell us a bit then about how you get there. How, how, how have you, what's your journey been like to, to find yourself in this place? <clears throat> yeah, um, well, uh, I suppose our, our, our Kind of personal journey uh, together to this place uh, started uh, quite a long time ago but probably says something uh, more about us and kind of how slow we are to react uh, really and um, so we met um, at a, a theological college a, a mission college um, in Glasgow back in 2007 and at that point um, as we were kind of getting to know each other we were we were kind of asking God you know uh, where, where, where do you want us? Where do you want us to serve? We, we'll, we'll go absolutely anywhere. Um, and, and that was certainly our prayer at that point. Um, and, but o over the, the years since, um, we've spent a, a lot of time um, in, in the Czech Republic. Uh, we should have said right at the beginning, perhaps, that, that Petra is, is Czech. Um, and as we've spent time in, in the country, we've um, had the most wonderful uh, conversations uh, with people, particularly uh, younger people um, of our own um, age. But then we've also had, so we've had that on one hand, but at the other hand, kind of hearing the statistics uh, 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 as well, um, and hearing something about the history of the Czech Republic. I mean, it's often uh, kind of uh, put down as, as one of the most atheistic countries in the world, and uh, often is uh, the most cited atheistic country um, in Europe. But we're having these kind of most amazing conversations too. So um, you know, it's, it's taken us a few years for the kind of penny to actually finally drop um, and for us to, to, to go and explore that. Um, it's taken us uh, two children, a, a dog, ordination training, um, a curacy. Um, and, but the church was very supportive. And then we went to, uh, to speak with uh, CMS. Um, and go through that process. So we're a bit slow, but 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 we're here now. Yeah. And how but, long have you been there? 
Well, we've, we've been here. Um, so, so, so that's the kind of longer journey. Uh, the, the, the slightly shorter journey, although it did seem quite a long time, was uh, uh, going uh, from Oxford uh, to the Czech Republic um, at the start of September. Yeah, so we packed up our uh, Kia Picanto, um, you know, with all of our stuff, with, with, with the kids. And yeah, we set out on our kind of, what was it, 18 hour trip um, uh, across to the Czech Republic. You don't have to do it by car. You can go by uh, by aeroplane uh, from Stansted over over to Benno in 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 just a, a couple of hours. Yeah, so if we visit, we don't have to drive. No, yeah. no, and, 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 we, and we certainly welcome visitors too. That's good to hear. I think it's already on your list, isn't it, Steve? It is. Yes, definitely on my list. Yeah. Um. So you've only kind of been there a few months, but how how are you beginning to kind of get to know the community and, and listen to the community as you kind of embed yourselves there. Yeah, um, well, I suppose um, we, a couple of years ago, we, we came across this book um, called um, uh, Will We Survive the Western Missionaries? Uh, Reflections by a Czech pastor. And um, well, it, it, it hit us quite hard really, um, because it, it, he recalls the time you know, at the end of communism where lots of missionaries kind of rushed into the country. Um, and he kind of uh, talks about how sometimes they acted in a way that um, Czech people thought that was a little bit superior. Um, although some did, not everybody learned the language, the culture, and uh, some didn't stay very long at all. Yeah, so it was quite hard hitting for us. So I suppose one of the great challenges that, that we feel that we face is to, is to listen um, and, and to listen uh, well to the community. Um, yeah. Um, we live in this um, small village um, just north of Erno. So um, we kind of, um, so we were just, um, we kind of moved here, we're in a bit of a chaos, to be honest. And then um, it was like, we just had this striking image that kind of stayed with us ever since the beginning of September, where in the evenings, the um, the, the community would gather around um, a small, well, just in the center of the village and people would gather and share life and things and um, make connections and network. And um, yeah, it, it was just, interesting how kind of um you know it was kind of lesson for us about mission and hospitality this is what we're talking about about creating um spaces and places for people to encounter um to encounter each other maybe encounter god um and it's um it's just been quite like hitting for us how mm. you know these sorts of places are already in place and um you know and community needs them actually this kind of like the heartbeat of the community so i think we've been reflecting on that mm. ever since you know um on many occasions actually we felt like we were on the receiving end of the uh, hospitality mm -hmm. like the space was created and we could enter it and i think um that is something we really want to bring forward you know if it's um i suppose how we on how we are in a village or how we take that um, into um, our wider community in a city mm -hmm. as well. It's just, um, you know, how important those spaces and creating community is. Mm -hmm. um, no, absolutely. Um, so uh, as Petra mentioned, it was a little bit of chaos when we <laughs> arrived. So we, uh, yeah, we, we live in the center of this uh, little community ne next to this well, but um, for the first kind of six weeks we were, we were cooking in the bedroom and washing up in the shower, um, which um, <laughs> wasn't it wasn't great. Um, but but you know people in the community uh, rallied around, and I think because we were kind of doing things the Czech way, and um, Czechs are kind of often noted as being quite thrifty, and uh, you know just just wanting to get their hands dirty and just oh, wanting get to get getting on, want to save money, and um, so, so we were kind of welcome that they, they saw us struggling I think um, so, so, and I'm not a practical guy uh, so, so uh, they wanted to, to come around us and also we um, had COVID too so um, the care of the community was was very much there so that kind of image as Petra's mentioned is something that we want to 
there's a kind of bit of a blueprint really for our ministry where we're living and um, but also our kind of wider ministry um, in the city as well it's really interesting isn't it because because the whole the thing about being on other people's turf mm -hmm. being alongside being together joining in all of that is 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 part of that isn't it it's uh it'd be interesting to see how that fits in city life as well you know what does how does that translate into the centre of the city? Some interesting ideas there, aren't there, to explore? <clears throat> no, absolutely, and particularly, um, but obviously we, we kind of were thinking about the, the biblical story of, of, of Jesus um, at the well and how uh, barriers were kind of broken as conversation, as life um, took place uh, by that well, where hospitality was kind of given and received. Um, so, yeah, we, 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 we just want to kind of inhabit that story, inhabit that kind of way of being. Um, and, and, and you're right in, in terms of the, the city as well, because the city is changing uh, rapidly and people are coming to make uh, this place home. Um, it's now got uh, 30,000 international people living here, um, which is quite an influx uh, given what the city was like even kind of yeah, uh, 30 years ago. Um, but breaking down those barriers and and finding a kind of common ground in which in which to be also i think we forgot to mention that Brno is um a student city it's got about yeah. eighty-five thousand um young people coming in every year to study um so um i think again the challenge as lee mentioned you know internationals um students uh, how do you create these uh, spaces of community and mm. encounter and experience in fairly transient community um i think the student work that's something we really want to explore because you know if, i think one in what's the statistic five. one one in five people in Brno are students um so yeah, I think I think there's a lot of challenges ahead, but you know, it is quite exciting. And I think, yeah, it has been a learning curve for us already. And we're hoping to um, carry on on this, uh, mm -hmm. on this journey of discovery, what yeah. it means to suppose create these, um, these spaces. Chris, as you reflect kind of back on your time since you arrived, um, what are you grateful to God for kind of right where you are right now? Yeah. Um, I think perhaps uh, uh, going back to, to, to what we said before about the uh, the sense of community that we've experienced here, um, that little period when uh, when the house was a bit kind of all all, all over the place, and and also when we had COVID too, um, the community here has just been extraordinary. Uh, the the kind of amounts of kind of people uh, knocking um, on our window during the day or during during the week just as just to come and have a chat. People rarely make it to, to the front door because they will come bang on the kitchen window and um, seeing if, you know, if we want this or that, or um, asking uh, just kind of, or just coming for a, a general uh, chat. I think those, those relationships that we've built up so far, that's been something that we're really thankful for. Um, but also kind of in, in the wider city too, um, getting to know people and um, the Christian community here you know it's it's small um, but there are some wonderful and faithful people um, here that have kind of welcomed us um, in enthusiastically and and that goes for um, uh, lay leaders uh, church leaders um, yeah the, the welcome has been has been warm I think for me it was also knowing that there are people praying for us Absolutely. and I think you know to be you know there were there were difficult we had some difficult times um already in those last few months and I think just you know when we were thinking okay God where are you um what why is, you know it, it's just a bit too much um it, it's quite a lot in very short space of time mm -hmm. when what is going on and I think just knowing there's community of mm -hmm people actually behind us um, in the UK and in the Czech Republic just praying knowing you know that that kind of the power of prayer really carries you through those um, through those times when you just you know questioning what's, go what's going on you know and um, we just people and we had some difficult days and mm -hmm. I think just occasionally getting a message saying you know we're praying um, it, it just meant a lot actually so just you know knowing that um 
it's not our mission it it's god's mission we're in it but you know it's it's why the mission we're, we're in it kind of together with other people that might not be living in the Czech republic or might not be living where we are but just knowing how connected we are um mm. Yeah. with a wider christian community i think it was something that was quite important yeah, for absolutely. me anyway um, yeah. that's lovely isn't it that togetherness um mm-hmm. makes so much difference um what is it so we talked about you know what, what you're really grateful for what, what is it that you are bothered by what's the thing that when you when you wake up in the middle of the night you're thinking <laughs> <laughs> oh um oh uh, that, <laughs> many things but i i, I think it's well, we, we, we certainly, well, I think we, we kind of uh, knew it in our minds before we went, but I think it's been very much confirmed uh, while we've been here that actually um, that mission, particularly mission here, is often a, a slow work. Um, as I mentioned right at the beginning, that, um, that the Czech Republic is often cited as the most atheistic country in Europe. Um, and actually, um, the, the ground is, is quite hard. Um, so in, in terms of, you know, th- there have been uh, wonderful opportunities uh, for sharing life and sharing faith. Um, but equally, um, among lots of people that there, there is kind of either um, a sense of kind of apathy uh, towards uh, the church, towards the things of faith, um, or um, also, or just a hostility too. So, you know, it's it's that kind of realization that actually, um, and perhaps it's, I don't know, a, a Western thing too, perhaps, you know, you know, we're just uh, going there and sort things out uh, and, and actually just, just to slow down a little bit and, and follow the promptings of the spirit and, and know that actually, as Petra was saying before, thank goodness that it's God's, God's mission and not ours and things will, will happen in, in, in God's time. And so, so in terms of work that, that seems a little slow, but also, oh, the bureaucracy here. Oh, it, it, everything is just very, very slow. Um, it, 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 it took about four and a half months to get a residency permit. Um, yeah, I, we, we're going to the town uh, council tomorrow to get some further documents sorted. So um, in terms of just, just getting kind of set up and, and kind of, you know, in a place where you feel, you know, kind of secure and rooted, to then kind of minister out of it's we're still not quite there yet um we, we, we had a wonderful image from somebody at cms who, who was talking about um i, th- I think it kind of relates uh, to us uh, but but it's um about how um in the book of deuteronomy how uh, uh newly married soldiers wouldn't be sent straight out to war um in, in their uh, first year of marriage and i think uh, the kind of parallel was about actually um, there needs to be, in times of transition, when new things are happening, that actually there needs to be some space for that to happen. And whether that's kind of a marriage or if it's a kind of uh, forming uh, of, of yeah, relocation of, of life, that, that actually that, that needs to be done and, and done well too. But there's an impatience within us. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And actually, that's that's probably a, a Christian lesson that, you know, I'll be learning and I have been learning over and over again for, yeah. uh, for years. Or I could look at it as eagerness to get on with God's work. Yeah. Oh, you, you <laughs> that, that's, that's a good one. <laughs> so so we're, we're, as a parish, uh, spending mm. this year kind of dwelling in Ephesians 3. Um, and that's our theme for this weekend. Um, what is it? that you would ask for or imagine for your mission place going forward? Well, uh, again, uh, thinking about that kind of vision of a place where people can come um, and find a a space where they can be able, where they're able to to meet the person of Jesus, where they can um, ask all of those uh, questions, have a place uh, to be discipled and equipped. We, we, we're really uh, praying uh, that, that, that God would raise up a group of people that would, would love his church, would love his mission, um, and that, um, that together we would be equipped to, to reach out and, and to serve and to bless uh, this 
uh, the city of Brno. But also, as Petra said before, you know, we've got so many students in the city. We, we long to be a place of discipling and equipping where people can come um, know more uh, about Jesus, uh, have their faith uh, deepened, but then uh, go out to wherever that may be um, across the world um, uh, to, to share Jesus within those contexts too. Uh, uh, one of the uh, verses that uh, we've been thinking about um, quite a lot recently, sorry, it, it's, it's not from a, a, a Ephesians, but it is from one of the letters. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, um, uh, but it's it's uh, from uh, one Thessalonians. Um, uh, perhaps uh, you might uh, know it, and um, and the verse says, uh, "So deeply do we care for you that we are so determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, our very selves, our whole lives, because you have become very dear to us, and we long to be." A a people, a community where that would be true of us. Um, uh, of course, we we often think about how uh, people will will know that we are disciples of Christ by the way that we love each other, and we pray that we would be a community like that. And um, obviously, sometimes we can be quite sentimental about community and how how lovely it could be. Um, and in reality, we know it's not always that simple, but it is something that is beautiful and the thing that God uses to further his kingdom. Mm, lovely. What we haven't um, touched on is your children. Um, so, so we don't know the names of your children yet and I think it would be lovely just to be able to know that and to be able to hold the whole family before God. So tell us a little bit about your two children. So we've got two, Olivia who's ten and a half and Theodore um, Ted, who's going to be nine in 20 days, I think. I can't it believe you don't down. know. 19, 19 is 19. Every morning he tells us. <laughs> so 19 days, he's, he's nine. Um, and um, we are homeschooling at the moment um, on the top of everything else. Um, Czech language is quite hard to learn. And um, so we thought we'll just give them a little bit of... Um, had start with Czech learning at, by keeping them at home and um, it's it's working quite well for Olivia I think that's going to be a bit slower uh, picking up the language um, like his father <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah they, they kind of um, they seem to be a bit more settled now they started to kind of I think it, it, it was quite hard on them to begin with um, but I think they just we just we just noticed this shift now and I think they're starting to now imagine life long term, which I think they struggle to do for um, quite a while. I, I don't know what it means, um, but actually, it's, so, so they uh, are waking up now saying, oh, can we go to school? <laughs> um, I, I don't know if it's because they're with us uh, so much. Um, <laughs> so, so they're desperate to get out and see and see friends. And actually, we're, we're at a, a school looking around um, last week. Um, nice. So. Yeah, and as Patrick was saying, that they're kind of getting into to life a little bit more too. So um, just as um, the adults are kind of knocking on the window uh, to have a chat with us, um, we get kind of, they're not gangs because they're, they're, they're quite young, uh, but but kind of groups of kids that come and uh, knock on the window uh, here too, to uh, to call for the kids and to have a, have a chat with us too. Yeah, actually. I sometimes think they actually come have a chat with us, not with the kids. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we often have just like a group of seven, eight kids just looking in outside from the outside in and we've got this like zoo-like feeling. But yeah, no, it's just it's, it's just quite nice um, to actually see them starting to kind of be excited about life mm. and um, yeah, I think I think this is going to be quite good for them actually long term. You know, it's um, it, it's definitely a learning curve. It is kind of inhabiting a new cult. Well, it's not completely new, but it is new. There's you know unwritten rules um, to follow that they're kind of getting in terms with um, a language. But yeah, I think you know they are getting excited and mm -hmm. they're kind of planning ahead and great. And 
And one of the things with uh, CMS is, um, so we went to train with CMS, um, went last January and we stayed in CMS house till the September. And uh, they very much kind of focus on the fact, um, and, and we have too, that, you know, we are on mission together. Um, you know, this isn't kind of mum and dad's job and we have to tag along and, oh, um, <laughs> but, but actually, no, we're in this together, that God's called us as a family. Um, so, yeah, we, we very much in, in, encourage that in our kids too. Um, um, we haven't touched on the fact that Shropshire is somewhere you know, Lee. Uh, yeah, I, I am a Shropshire lad. Um, uh, yeah, I, I haven't uh, lived in Shropshire for a little while, but my parents and uh, family members uh, still uh, live in Shropshire. A little bit uh, down the road uh, uh, from you guys. Um, uh, was uh, born and brought up in, in Lillishall, not too far from uh, Newport in Shropshire. Uh, perhaps you uh, might know uh, the Sports Centre yeah. in Lillishall as being the kind of uh, big uh, landmark mm -hmm. uh, there. Um, yeah, so actually it's it's be wonderful uh, when we uh, come back uh, to Britain, if we might be able to, to pop along and, and to come and see you all. We'd very much like to do that. Mm -hmm. I'm sure some of us want to come and see you. Oh, no, you very much. Well, 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 we'll make sure that, you know, we, uh, we we do a bit on the house before you come. <laughs> uh, yeah, but at least we've got a kitchen now. Yeah. You, yeah. You'd be very welcome. That's twice you've said that now, Romain. I know. It's all yeah. right. <laughs> I'm a traveller. Calm down. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's, not, it's not that pretty, I'm afraid. No. <laughs> no. The people that make the place. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> we, you know, the world has been in lockdown for two years. We're all like, get us out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so as we kind of begin uh, this new partnership uh, together, which we, you know, we're, we're really excited about. Um, what's your thoughts on how that might look um, for you um, in terms of partnership? Mm. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, no, uh, I, I suppose we're, we're just just really excited and, and really thankful to god uh, as well that that we um, can partner together um and, and particularly that uh, we're partnering partnering together at this time of um our journeys um as we uh, come out of lockdowns as we kind of reflect on what covid has brought and uh, all that it has meant to us but also um how we as as a church as we kind of um, step out in faith and as we engage in the world in, in this uh, new season uh, and I think it's really important for us and, and we, 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 we truly believe that, um, that we're all part of God's mission you know if, if we're doing mission you know across the other side of Europe or the other, other side of the street we're, we're all in God's mission uh, together and that we do have uh, things that we can share and learn from each other and that we can uh, support uh, one another uh, too. And of course, as, as Pen Petra mentioned before, um, uh, we, we very much um, appreciate and, and, and want to, uh, to give our, ourselves and our lives in, in prayer um, as we pray for, for one another in all that God has got in store for, for each place um, uh, moving forward. So. Um, yeah, we, we really want to, to get to know uh, 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 the, the church and uh, the, the people that, uh, that that make it. Um, and we can't wait to be able to actually uh, pop over and see you in person. We're, of course, we're thankful for Zoom. We are thankful for Zoom <laughs> and that, we, that this yeah. can happen. But, you know, nothing beats actually just sitting, you know, with a cup of tea and uh, and well, just just sharing life together. So, so firstly, um, something about prayer, kind of mutual support. Um, yeah, sharing stories, uh, sharing life together, but but also we we would love uh, for there to be a, a time opportunities um, where we can kind of uh, visit each other, um, and uh, you know, kind of joking before, but no, it would be wonderful if um, people from from the parish would were able to to, to come over uh, to the Czech Republic and vice uh, versa. Um, and I, I suppose we were kind of uh, thinking uh, before about, you know, we very much see ourselves as a family on mission. You know, this isn't, you know, it's, it's not some special people that do mission or a certain age or stage or you've got to 
have these certain qualifications we're, we're all in it together and, and I think that's something that well, we encourage in kind of our family life but also we'd want to encourage in church too so um whoever um it is um in whatever church um yeah we can all be encouraged to to reach out with the good news of jesus oh man mm. and Sorry, we're sermon, arriving sermon, sermon over <laughs> and we're arriving tomorrow is that all right no. oh, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure we've got an air bed <laughs> oh, i'll bring mine it's fine <laughs> great well we look forward and we're praying about kind of how this partnership moves forward at, like you say, at this exciting time for, for both us as a parish and you as a family, as you um, really dig into what God is calling you to do in Bruno. So I think, are we done? Is that, is that your questions, Romain? I think so. I think we finished the, I think we finished the list and I think we've done justice to them all. <laughs> Amazing. Well, guys, it's been amazing to see, speak to you and um, we'll be in touch soon. Wonderful. Yeah. You take care. Oh, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye bye. <laughs>